taking control of your life after toxic relationships, after being controlled, after the gaslighting, after the living your life for someone else and not having any ability even anymore to know who it is you are or what you want to do. So how do you do that? And what, what do you struggle with is more important. What do you struggle with in that regard? Well, let's see. Let's start with making decisions. Making decisions, any decision after you have been controlled can be very difficult. It can be make you confused about what's right and wrong. I'm going to read a few things that I have jotted down here. Um, it can make you feel like your brain is mush and you can't make decisions. Like you just can't. You may feel shut down, hopeless, kind of helpless. Like you can't think. Um, might worry about feeling like, um, just worry. You might just worry. You might feel like you're afraid of messing up or, or of making the wrong decision, making the wrong choice. And it can be totally scary to step into something to make a decision. You can have two positives in your life, two options, and both can seem terrifying because you feel trapped in how to make the right decision. And it can be a self-limiting trap, right? And the thing is that we we know now if we're out and we have gone through any amount of healing, we know that that something in us, we feel sometimes made the decisions that led to our life, right? <laughs> Which means we don't trust our decision-making skills because we've got a history or a past or what we perceive as, as a past of making decisions that lead us the wrong direction, right? In other words, we chose to be with that person. Now, we know logically that we didn't know what was going on and you can't know what you don't know, but there's a part of us that gets afraid and can't move forward or feels like it can't move forward. Trying to get back to the old you or even a new and improved you that now knows that, you know, now has wisdom and knowledge behind the old you stuff, right? So anyway, with all that feeling of, you can hear in that if I just say, I'm shut down, I'm hopeless, I can't think. I don't know. I don't, I don't know how to make a decision. I'm worried I'm going to do the wrong thing. Can you hear the limiting beliefs in that? I can hear the limiting beliefs in that. I can hear that what, where a person who is stuck there is coming from, perhaps is from a place of limiting beliefs about themselves, about their capabilities of making decisions, about the fact that decisions they've made in the past have led them places they don't want to be that their lives are not perfect now and therefore they've made decisions that got there. You know what I mean? Like we build ourselves up to thinking we can't actually make a decision. So let's look at healthy decision-making skills or, or ideas for how to make decisions. Sometimes when you have a limiting belief, but you can actually justify that limiting belief through the proof of the things that have happened in your life. You know what I'm saying? Like if you say, I always fail at blah, 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 and you can prove that you always fail at it because you have a track record of failing at it. It's really hard to shift that limiting belief to I can totally succeed at that thing without a different strategy. So sometimes when we're stuck in our limiting beliefs and when we're stuck in the pattern of having been taught that we make poor decisions because we are controlled and manipulated into believing so through narcissistic abuse. It's adapting to other people's strategies or looking at strategies that are, are ways that are go beyond the feeling level so that you can get some movement toward the decision you're trying to make. Is that making sense? So some ideas are um, what... What are your views about the thing? What Write them down. What are your views about the thing you're trying to make a decision about? If it's getting a new job or buying a car or whatever it is, whatever that decision is that you're struggling with, what are your views about it? Write it down in one paragraph. Don't elaborate. Don't put a whole lot of emotion. Just your views. What do you, what do you believe? What do you want? What do you, what do you see it? What's, your, what's the vision you have for that decision? Um, another one would be um, talk it out loud with people. Writing it is good too. If you don't have people to talk to out loud, get some support. But before you do that, I would make a list of pros and cons. I would make a list of pros and cons. I mean, that's the basic, right? Decision-making tool that people use. 
and so before you talk it out, make a list of pros and cons so you know where you're coming from. So you're not talking it out through emotion, you're talking it out through actually trying to make a decision. I think sometimes what happens when we are stuck in the limiting belief mode, where we go into this sort of PTSD mode of, of spaced out, can't make a decision, freaked out, trauma, over overwhelm, it's really hard to speak from a place of success. You're going to speak from the place where you feel, which is terrified and indecisive. So in order to get a clear vision, try to speak to people from a place of actually asking, what do you think is better? Not, can you please prove that what I'm thinking might happen actually will happen? Can you please prove the bad so I can just make the decision of no? You know, so if you want to actually make a clear decision, make your pros and cons list, then talk it out. So you're speaking from a place of a more logical uh, view, right? So what, what are your hopes? So once you've figured out logically and you've, and you've put down what you, what your vision is, what are your hopes? Bring in the emotion. What are your hopes for this decision? What are your hopes? How could, how could it be good and how could it go wrong? What are your hopes? But more, more than the going wrong, what are your hopes for it? Is, does that seem achievable? Okay. Uh, then ask yourself why five times. I love this. Why five times? Okay. I want to take this job. I'm thinking about taking this job. Why? Because it's got better hours and it um, pays better. Why is that important? Because I need the money, because I really like the extra time off to do whatever in the evening. Why? Oh, because I'm trying to improve myself. I want to go back to school or because I'm trying to whatever, whatever. Why? So you keep going. Go deeper and deeper and deeper into your own questioning of why you actually want to do the thing. If you stay on the surface, it's really hard to get to the meat of what you're trying to decide, right? Nothing, a lot of our lives are on like really deep levels and we don't realize it. We, we act very surfacely all the time, right? But really we're living our life from a deeper place. We're just not going there. So why, 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 why? Five times, get five levels deep into your question. That takes you out of the limiting beliefs. It forces you into actually following your own train of thought and actually gaining some self-agency, your decision, your choices. You can do that first, then talk it out loud with someone else. Get some awareness and understanding of what it is you want, not just on a surface level, but deeper, 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 deeper until you get to the, sometimes you may get to the point where this will make me feel like, aha, there's a nice deep feeling, right? So see what happens. Another thing before you make any decision that is stressing you out, meditate, do some mindfulness meditations and get yourself out of the spinning your wheels mode and into a more centered and grounded place. When you're in distress, how to deal with being in distress, how to have stressful situations hit you hard and you're triggered and you're in reaction, how to calm down and take control of the situation within yourself. So that's kind of where decision making is leading. And this is a good segue here because no contact does help to clear the fog, but the PTSD part can be re-triggered by something triggering, by something even exciting, by something that forces you to make a decision, by something that is distressing that you have to deal with, by things that aren't necessarily toxic or narcissistic, they're just a pain and they're hard. And so then all of a sudden you're thrown back into the same pretty much the same thing of the brain mush and the shutdown, but then you know, add, add on top of it reactionary response because of instead of the shutdown that comes with lack of decision making, when you're in distress and you've got triggers, you're, you're shut down and you're activated at the same time. So your cognitive functioning is shutting down while your, your reactions are, are ramping up. And so you get the emotional flip, right, happens and you get super reactionary to the situation and then it's hard to be yourself and again, make a decision and create something you want out of the situation or to try and even um, function in the situation. The whole point is you're not in the trauma, you're in the moment that you're in now, but we're referring back to a memory, which it's triggering, right? And so it throws you into the past. 
And so whenever you're thrown into the past, you're not living in the moment, right? And so I guess to me, the point is mindfulness. You get yourself back into the moment is go ahead and feel what you need to feel for a little while. Go ahead and walk it off, like literally walk it off. Walk, feel your feet pounding on the ground and your heart rate rising and your body temperature rising and just let yourself walk. Let your thoughts be where they are. But then at a certain point in your walk, and I usually do it after about five minutes, is um, start intentionally focusing on what's around you. Um, looking for positives, looking for good things, looking for um, bringing in good thoughts so that you are directly um, influencing yourself on the way you're thinking. And it's not to avoid the feelings you're having. You've given them enough time to validate them. But, you know, it's time to at a certain point we have to direct our thoughts in order to recover. Um, I'm not talking about something that's going on. I'm talking about a trigger where we don't really need to sit and dwell on triggers. Right. They are not. There's nothing to do about them. They're just horrible feelings you can't do it there's nothing to fix there's nothing to there's nothing usually in the situation of your actual life at the moment it's just like a reference back to the packs that we don't need to hang on to i i often suggest people create a self-care toolkit so find something for each sense sense find something that smells nice something that you like to look at something that tastes good something that anything soothing to yourself something to touch and put it in a little kit for yourself and take it with you. If you're in a state of where you're triggered all the time or you're going into a situation like say you got to go, say you got to go somewhere and you know the narc might be there. 